What's going on, guys? Brian Jack with Seven Men's Comics. We've reached the end of yet another week. So, of course, that means one thing. It's time for Last Call. That's right. We are talking about Final Order Cutoff. These are our picks for books that are hitting Final Order Cutoff this coming Monday night. A little bit earlier if you're DC. Always got to put that in there. Definitely. But it was a busy comic book week. We had a great three up, three down. We had a great new comic book day. But now we're talking Last Call, Jack. Yeah, absolutely. It's that time of the week to be talking about these books hitting final order to cut off in the last opportunity to get some pre-orders in. We, we give you the hard sell every week, but I got to tell you, there are some major key issues hitting final order cut off in this week's last call show. Yeah, we're getting into it right now. We're going to kick it off. Everyone's talking about Star Wars. We've been talking about Star Wars and we get another Star Wars hitting FOC. We're talking about that Star Wars High Republic number one. Yeah, if you're not familiar with the, the High Republic uh, concept that Star Wars announced, um, this is almost kind of, think of it as like almost a separate universe. It's, it's within the Star Wars universe, but it's kind of a separate, a separate concept that you're going to see span across um, all of their publishing platforms. There's, there's already been an announcement of the Marvel series, an IDW series with Star Wars Adventures line, as well as you'll see some like younger um, all ages kids books, but they, you know, the high Republic, um, it's well, it was initially pro promoted as project luminous and it was kind of like under like a shroud of mystery, but, um, it's a kind of sub series of the star Wars franchise. It's set, um, in the high Republic sub era, um, during the age of the Republic, uh, set 200 years before the events of the Skywalker saga. So you're going to get a lot of new characters, I believe within this, um, this kind of subset and we've talked on almost every show about the popularity of star wars right now now this is kind of a different thing right because this is super organic coming directly from the publishing side of star wars um it's not originating from you know the film side but i i'm bullish on almost anything star wars and i like the the level of emphasis that seems to be behind this project because we talk about follow the money and this being a kind of a cross-platform multimedia um project that has people all the way up to kathleen kennedy um commenting and talking about it has me kind of excited to see where this is going to go stick with marvel and also hitting on that king in black we get that gwenham versus carnage number one this has some gorgeous covers for it. you got ryan brown and you got in here lee but we're talking about this one mainly, but there's also some other tie-ins as well, right? That's right. This one, we definitely have to be sure to highlight because you've got kind of a recipe for success. You've got the King and Black tie-in. Of course, everything null is, is hot. But also, Gwenum. Every time Gwenum shows up within the, the Spider-Gwen Ghost Spider series, those issues spike in value. That's definitely kind of like the kind of like top tier within her universe and then of course carnage is an extremely popular character so you kind of get all three wrapped into one um but yes you're right you mentioned um this is worth noting and something that we want to bring up but there's several king and black tie-ins um hitting final order cut off this week from planet of the symbiotes um to namor uh to atlantis attacks um and it's important to bring that up because I know a lot of people are really trying to stay on top of the reading order uh, of, you know, all tie-ins across uh, this, you know, big, big sweeping year-end Marvel story. Um, but also it's worth noting um, as well because a lot of these issues could have key events occurring in them and will get overlooked. Um, it's also Marvel Tales has a Planet of the Symbiotes book, not quite a direct tie-in, but definitely part of the kind of like theme of everything that's going on with Null and the Symbiotes. Yeah, and if you're all in on this King and Black and you want those tie-ins, no perfect time to do it than for FOC, pre-order it, get those discounts and also like we said the, the sponsor of this show black cape comics they offer pre-orders for all these books we talk about and they offer that discount as well sticking with marvel and sticking with symbiotes we get that venom number 32 this has some great covers it's also kicking off the beginning of those alien variants right yeah, it is. And, and, you know, this one also, King and Black tie-in, 
Um, I think of all of the tie-ins, it's probably the one that's going to carry the most weight being that, you know, it's the book that Kingdom Black spawns out from. Um, but yes, also the, another important thing to kind of bring up is we've seen kind of the return of the rise of the themed variants. Um, Marvel for a long time was not doing well with those. And they've kind of had a bit of a resurgence due to what seems like, at least from an outside perspective, a refocus on making sure that um, there's more purpose and intention to the creation of these variants. And certainly the acquiring of a uh, acquisition of a new property, a new license, like Aliens is going to bring on a themed variant month. And <clears throat> while we're still in the midst of these nullified variants, we're also now going to get these alien variants. So that's something to pay attention to. There is one for this Venom 32. It's probably my favorite. Um, certainly with uh, Venom, the symbiote itself being an alien, it kind of naturally ties in. Um, it was one, that's the, one of the head to head. Yeah, and that was one of those dream match. That was one of those dream matchups. As soon as like you know you announced the acquisition of, of the license, it was like, well, we got to see Venom and Alien. But um, I, and I I certainly hope and I'm hopeful that we will see the kind of like those crossing over of those brands. But um, even if we don't right now you get a great opportunity on the cover of these variants so there are several books that are going to have these aliens variants so that's something to be on the lookout for starting on this final order cutoff and it'll probably be the next few final order cutoffs there will be some of these alien variants um and we talked about pre-ordering if you absolutely are a diehard aliens fan you gotta have these i would check out bundles a lot of stores do bundles for um a lot, a lot of these like variant programs so great opportunity to save some money as well as help your LCS out by, you know, getting a block of pre-orders in and helping them to be able to predict the demand of some of these books. Yeah. I mean, especially if it doesn't hurt also, you can shoot an email to our other channel sponsor, Kevin at Frankie's comics. Yep. They, they do offer those type bundles a lot. And I mean, I'll, I'll say it. We've said it on this channel a lot of times where overall, I'm not a huge fan of the monthly variants from Marvel, these theme variants, but they always have a few covers that I end up picking up just because the, the comic fan of me or the cover art fan of me has to pick it up for the cover alone. And this is definitely one of them. Mm. We are going Marvel heavy on this FOC and we got Eternals number one. I don't know if Eternals means for the title of the book or Eternals for the amount of covers for this book because it seems like there's an eternal amount of covers. We are talking, I can't even fit them all on screen right now, but we just talked about how Eternals is kind of down right now from the buzz on the three up, three down. We also talk about follow the money and Marvel is putting their money behind Eternals with this issue. Right. I think that's really the key point about this. Um, there's been a lot of talk about this Eternals release. I believe it's the most covers Marvel's ever released, um, you know, as part of like their regular release program, not store exclusives. Um, and, you know, the 40 something covers or something like, I mean, it's an incredible number. Um, and a lot of people are, you know, immediately making, you know, negative connotations to that. Um, I think there's, a, I think it's fair, right? It is nuts. Um, I think we get entitled to like a, well, you know, that means I can't buy them all. Maybe not. Or maybe it takes you a long time to put that set together. Maybe that's something that you really have to build towards. That maybe that's going to be a challenge for set builders. Again, another great opportunity for bundles if you're, you know, if that, that's your thing. Otherwise, I think they're taking the buy what you like uh, model that to, to kind of like an extreme where they've given you every kind of art style. They have to like one of them. I'm telling you. Exactly. And I, I, why would they do that? Well, here's the thing. You mentioned follow the money. Um, and we talked about that. And we talked about it on 3 Up, 3 Down. But our belief about the Eternals, it's down right now. But Marvel is putting a lot into this property. Well, I think that's what this is. They really want people to buy this comic book. And they don't care what cover you buy, whether it's the J. Scott Campbell cover, the Hildebrandt cover, the Art Adams cover. They, they don't care. They don't care. Wh whichever one you connect with. So you have modern artists, vintage artists. You have artists of all kinds. You've got the digital. You've got the pinup artists. You've got every kind of artist that Marvel employs doing a cover for Eternals. You're getting the opportunity to kind of like take your choice for What's your art style? And I think they just want the most amount of these books in people's hands as possible. Uh, I'm interested to read the story because certainly the Eternals is a 
um, property that's been criticized largely for the, their like reader buzz um, set on their series. And that was a lot of the negativity going into the announcement of the movie. But, you know, we talked about Guardians of the Galaxy really only had that Dan Abnett run that started to kind of rebound them. And I think it's, it's very similar with that, you know, last Eternals run from Romita Jr. kind of giving them maybe some life that didn't exist because it just wasn't, it wasn't a hit when Jack Kirby introduced it. So um, Marvel is putting a lot of into this. We just joked before going on air about, and I, I think it's something that it kind of deserves to be brought up is Marvel must have spent a fortune to commission all of the art for all of these covers. So they're, they're putting money into this. There's a reason why this is important to them. Um, so even if this issue really is never a secondary market uh, success, which I can't imagine it would be with the, the sheer number of covers, um, then it's still worth noting of what it says about how they feel about Eternals and the way we should feel about the back issues. Now, if I'm going to really play devil's advocate, Brian, and start some trouble, I'm going to say, since the moment they announced this book and announced these covers, people have been negative on this. That tends to make people not order with so many of these covers. I wonder if any of these covers will be ghosts. I wonder if there will be some of these covers that just stores don't order a lot of, and they end up being books that down the line when that movie comes out, people are chasing. Uh, it's something I could see very plausibly happen. Yeah, and another thing is, the, I mean, the, the fan or the comic reader, there might be some negatives for it, but it might be a positive for the retailers with so many covers, you know, for incentive variants, it helps them qualify for those incentives a little bit easier by spreading right. it out amongst all those covers. But I mean, you the viewers you guys watching this let us know do you plan to pick up eternals and read it i i definitely plan to read it but i, I know i'm gonna pick or choose what covers and i'm not going to go very deep as far yeah. as uh, expense on it that's for sure but we do have one dc book and that's right i say one but we actually got a, quite a few of them we're just going to touch on it but we're getting the future state we're getting future state kicking off hitting foc this week right right and it, it's funny because you say one book and yeah it's, it's really one entry but really i had to edit this on our list because i had like four future state books that i thought were really important and then it was hard to decide well where do you cut it off yeah. um certainly future state wonder woman number one is going to be you know the first full appearance of yara flores we know the tv shows coming that's going to be a hot book uh I think it's almost going under the radar future state, uh, the new Batman. Like, I mean, we don't even know who that character is yet, but African-American black Batman, we saw the craze of what people spent on Lucas Fox's first appearance with the assumption that it would be him based on that bleeding cool article. To me, that proves demand. The litmus test has already been proven. Like it's there. So I'm excited for that book. Um, you mentioned channel sponsor. I mean, people should be on the lookout for an awesome Ken Lashley Frankie's comics cover coming. Um, but yeah, th that's a book to be excited for. You've got the Dark Detective. You've got uh, Justice League. You've got the Flash, a new Flash f appearing in both Justice it's League. It's almost like and Rebirth all over again. It is, but with brand new characters. If you like first appearances, you're going to get them. And it's a little bit tougher because all of them are FOCing at the same time. Yeah, th so this is one that for me, as the fan, if I can find a bundle, that's where I'm a pre-order for the is a, a, exactly. a bundle for the future state. Perfect, but and that's a perfect, perfect bundle. And I've seen people do cover A bundles, cover B bundles, and wow, look, there is some amazing cover B cover art. If this future state program takes off, I actually kind of like the future state branded um, trade dress, but it's like, it's kind of to each his own because you know DC does cover Bs. Amazingly, there's also some Wonder Woman 1984 variants that are going to be sprinkled in throughout several of these books. There's some incredible cover art there. So you, we just talked about Eternals has a J. Scott Campbell cover. There's a J. Scott Campbell cover for a future state book. So a lot of books to be on the lookout for. Um, I think this is going to be a tough final order cutoff on retailers, looking at the number of future state titles, um, looking at some of the key important Marvel titles we just talked about. And we haven't even gotten into indie titles that I think are going to command people's attention. So um, this is going to be a tough week. Some books are going to get overlooked, but this is where preparedness comes in. So be on the lookout for these future state titles and be sure to pick up that free future state book from your LCS because there's still a lot of LCSs that have those available. Yeah, I'm all, I'm keeping my eye out on the for, for the lookout for the future state Batmite. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we, 
we kind of consolidated here. We said one, but we mean there's a lot of books out there. Oh, and if you're okay. interested in future state, this is the FSC that you want to get in on. But that's also going to lead us over into the Indie Showcase version of the show. That's right, the Indie Showcase, brought to you by Black Cape Comics. Like we said earlier, all the books we talk about here, you can pre-order from Black Cape Comics, but they sponsor the Indie Showcase. Love or They love Indie Comics just as much as we do. And we have two on the showcase for you this week. The first one we're talking about, sticking with the freaking heavy hitter from Image, and we got crossover number three. Yeah, and this is getting some increased attention today as a Donny Cates tweet went out just a day ago um, that says, retailers, all capitals. Uh, hey, you know I don't bullshit about this stuff, so please believe me when I tell you that issue three and especially issue six, so that's something the future be on the lookout for, of crossover are going to be big, like really big, like crazy big. Order accordingly, they will sell out. Um, now, again, Donny Cates has that reputation. He says that he doesn't bullshit. I don't think he, he that's the word, um, but he's a salesman. Yeah. Um, and it's tough because on an indie title, I question what is the thing that could happen, right? That would really push. I mean, even if a major death, right, or a crazy event, there has to be cachet within the title, like um, Invincible or Spawn for some major event to do that. But I got to say crossover has an opportunity because there's so much still mystery shrouded in this concept. Um, there's so much that still play out um, that I'm very curious about issue three. He also put out there, and this is great information to have as you're putting in your pre-orders that there will be a secret variant for number three. So as you're putting in your pre-orders, a lot of places, you know, they're not going to separate those two. You know, you have an opportunity to get in on a book that could be quite hot when it's released. So, you know, whether or not Donny Kate is blowing smoke or this is, uh, you know, a big heater issue, one to pay attention to, um, we'll let you decide. But want to give you that information before FOC so you can make the best decision and save the most money. Yeah, and the other one I want to talk about in the showcase this is one that might not, you know, be on a, might not be on a bunch. Of, <laughs> this is one that might not be on a bunch of people's radar, but it's a book that I'm super excited for. Of course, we're talking about Boom Studios, and if you're a friend of Wind, it, if you're if you're a fan of books like Wind or or Folklords or any of those other type books, The Last Witch number one is hitting FOC. Gorgeous, gorgeous regular cover. If you're a fan of Middle West, it's got that Jorge Corona cover for this, yeah. and. If you like Adventure Time, a regular show, we got the writer writing this fantastic cover. There's actually three different covers for it, though, right? Yeah, three different covers. Um, you, it's great comparables that you made there with Wind and Folklords. Um, certainly, you, you get that gist and vibe. And it's funny because I know the speculators who watch the show may be like, ah, those two properties didn't do well. Um, I will tell you that those properties may not have been speculative hits, um, but they were Hollywood popular. So those are not books that I would uh, dismiss so quickly. I think we're, there's going to be a second life for Wind and Folklords uh, at some point. And with that in mind, um, whether or not you choose to believe me on that, that's up to you. But because of that, with that in mind, I, I am as well excited about this release. Um, I think it's one that is not going to be like a, as soon as it releases big book. Um, but it's one that I don't think is going to be hugely ordered. People, people go after the peach, peach cover for sure. Yes. Yes. And it's a great peach cover too. Like another, it's a standout. Um, but this is a boom box release. So it's, it's under their kind of like all ages imprint. It's more of, um, uh, a, a directed, targeted uh, fantasy story. But uh, again, I think that they've, Boom has kind of started to hit a flow with these type of stories. And because of that, I'm, I'm on board for this one. Yeah. You might say all ages, but, but I think it's more than, I think it, I think it crosses those demographics and, and don't get stuck with that all ages stigma. I think this is going to be a great story. But uh, Right. All ages means all ages. Doesn't just mean children's ages. Yeah. But yeah, that wraps up the Indie Showcase, and those those are also our picks for FOC. But like we always talk about, not a big list, but we do have some additional printings. Yeah, a little bit smaller this week. Uh, definitely a few keys. Um, we're starting off with Boom Studios with Mighty Morphin number one coming to a third printing. Um, Vader number seven. 
uh, from Marvel and Star Wars coming with a second print. We've got Wolverine number seven as well coming with a second print and uh the big indie hit uh from behemoth a girl walks alone at night number one coming with a second print so be on the lookout for those as well as every book we talked about tonight on the last call show uh make sure you get those pre-orders in remember that that dc final order cutoff period is before that marvel one and with all those future study titles on board you're going to want to make sure you get those pre-orders in uh be sure to hit up blackcapecomics.com or frankiescomics.com and get any of your pre-orders in uh before that foc period there it is guys there is the last call from simple man's comics this is brian and jack we'll see you guys in the next video